Welcome back, everyone. This uh, will be another tier list. Now, this one here is uh, all the movies that I watched this year um, that I actually wanted to watch this year. Um, so I know there's still a couple months left in the year, but I wanted to kind of this is more or less a summer from winter to summer rundown. <laughs> so. Let's uh, jump ahead here. Alien Romulus was a blockbuster for me. The reason I say that is because at first, when I first heard about it, I wasn't too keen on it. Just the plot line. And just because of, of the past Alien films that they uh, brought out weren't really that great. Um... Alien Romulus really surprised me, and I thought it was good all the way through. It brought back the horror and the tension. I mean, you've seen it, me talk about it ad nauseum on my review. So, it's going to go on Blockbuster. Fly Me to the Moon. The actors in it. You have uh, Tatum, Johansson, um... The actor that played uh, Raymond and Everybody Loves Raymond. You had a, a decent cast here, and the premise was interesting. Uh, but it was just like the pacing was a little slow. Um, I, I'm not going to say it's a terrible movie. It's definitely a one-watch, but it, it was... It was forgettable. Like, I'm not going to remember it, um, you know, and I'm not going to rewatch it type of deal. Um, I, I did like the premise, though, about how they handled the moon landing in NASA. So, in that respect, it's okay. It's between disappointing and forgettable, I guess. But it's not a movie that I go back and watch. Trap is going to go into disappointing. Oh, man, this, this film could have been so much better than it actually turned out to be. Um, I just felt that it, it had, it, it just didn't nail the suspense for me. It just, I, I, um, a lot of decisions in the film were like, what the hell? Um, and the twist in it wasn't really a twist for me for uh, this film. So, I mean, it felt like there were multiple endings, honestly, there and, and didn't need to have that in there. And then a lot of the focus was like the, felt like the, it was, you were in a music video. Um, so, yeah, a disappointing film, uh, forgettable you know, it's it's going to be disappointing and forgettable in between there, but I put it in disappointing because I was hoping that it would be decent enough, but it wasn't. So, Axel F goes into Blockbuster. Uh, awesome fourth Beverly Hills Cop film, bringing back the old actors, having a simplistic... Um, Storyline: Eddie Murphy brings the character back as if he never left off from where he was. Makes us forget Beverly Hills Cop Three, at least for me. Um, and I feel like it picks up after Beverly Hills Cop Two. If I'm gonna be, you know, I gotta put the, the these three in the trilogy of Beverly Hills Cop films. Uh, fun time, really funny. The plot was simple. I didn't particularly care for his daughter's character that much, but she didn't break the film for me. And they kind of, I, I felt that like, you know, it wasn't totally a, a throwaway character by the end, but just like in the beginning there, she didn't really grow on me. And then after, after mid film, it's kind of like, okay, I can, yeah. But again, it didn't detract from the fun that was this movie. So, Fifth with Ryan Reynolds uh, it was a, it was a good time. It was uh, it was fun. It was uh, the uh, plot was very interesting and kind of like imaginary friends and 
the characters were were decent enough, and the, there was good comedy in it. Um, yeah, it it was a it was a good family film. Um, I would watch it again. Um, I, I I like the voice. Uh, I believe uh, Steve Carell did the voice of the main uh, purple guy you see there. Um, uh, the most interesting thing about the movie was the the plot itself and kind of like you know the imagine, imaginative uh, imaginary friends of, of kids and stuff you know um, which one film we'll get to kind of like sort of tried to go along the same lines but it was more horror of course Fall Guy forgettable uh, it's more forgettable than disappointing, but definitely disappointing. Um, I felt like the pacing was off and the ending was just meh. And uh, the more I think about the film, the more forgettable it is, which is unfortunate because it could have been like a decent movie at, at least. Um, you know, I saw a trailer for this, and even though it was like a Sorry, a movie adaption of the uh, Lee Majors, The Fall Guy TV show, I thought it would be fun. Um, it wasn't really that fun. Um, the dynamic of the love interest there was okay. The action was there. But um, overall, it was a disappointing, forgettable film. I gotta put The Exorcist at Forgettable. It's more forgettable than disappointing if I think back on it. <laughs> it's a different uh, take on the sort of exorcism type of idea. But ultimately, it's a one watch and you're done. It's um, The suspense could have been better. Uh, there was Russell Crowe had some really neat parts there. But overall, it's just one of those one time watch for me. Uh, Sting. I'm going to put that in a good time. Very good spider movie. And I think uh, that's probably one of the good monster movies I've seen in a long while. Um, trying to think the last one before that. I can't even think of the last one before that. I like the fact that it didn't take itself seriously. Um, and the characters were decent. Um, and the design of the uh, monster, it, it was pretty good. Okay, so Roadhouse was a good time. Um, I like how this remake didn't stay in the bar and it went outside of that just was it felt like its own film uh the action there was was cool um you know it's one of those kind of you know silly throwaway actions but it was a good time uh there's not really a lot more to say about that one imaginary Imaginary, you're going to put it disappointing. Uh, the premise was fine. Um, but it's not a film I feel that I'm going to watch again. Um, yeah, I and the, the one thing that always bugged me about it is the, the old lady character basically has to have her big exploration scene explaining everything. Like, uh, that was that was just, she's just in there because, and she ultimately becomes like a silly plot point. So yeah, imaginary is going to be there. Uh, Argyle sucked. Um, it could have been so much better than it was, and it's going into the forgettable film. Not even disappointing. Like I, I thought that it could have been a fun movie and the premise there and everything, but it, it turned out to be just like a 
what is this kind of movie for me? Henry Cavill couldn't save it. Hmm. Beekeeper was a good time. Uh, Jason Statham actioner where he beats up scammers. I mean, who doesn't want to see that? Especially for anyone that's been scammed. Uh, fun action movie. Jason Statham always gives 110% in his action films. And it's, it was nice. Uh, this movie really came out of nowhere for me. And I didn't, didn't expect it. You know, I uh, saw it. And, and I'm like, oh, I'll put this on. So... Good time. Uh, I'd watch it again. Quiet Place. Uh, good time. I was surprised. Um, it um, For a prequel, it, it was good. Uh, they actually held it off, and, and it sort of connects with the other two, and it, it has its suspenseful moments there, and it actually has a twist ending uh, that I didn't expect. So, decent time. Uh, I could watch, like, the Quiet Place movies there. I mean, um, they're all good in their own right, so. Bad Boys, uh, Ride or Die, uh, excellent fourth Bad Boys film. This one came out of nowhere. Like, I didn't even know they were making it until I saw a trailer pop up, and I'm like, wow. Good film. I like how it connects uh, the older older films a little bit. And it brings back characters, obviously, from the previous films there and, and kind of connects with events from the third film. Uh, I enjoyed it there. Um, the whole uh, Martin Lawrence character arc there where, with what he does in the film is a little different there. But overall, it was uh, it had humor in it. The action was good. The story was simple and decent enough. And uh, it's definitely a Blu-ray own for me. Uh, the God's Kong, Godzilla, uh, what was it a new empire? Um, yeah, it was a good time. It was, you know, just a, a monster movie that was interesting with the uh, sort of uh, underground area there and really cool designs. Uh, and uh, it felt like more of a Kong film here uh, with Godzilla kind of being in the background, which I was fine with. Um, the humans weren't as annoying as the previous film. Um, there was some interesting characters there. So, yeah, it was a good time. Twisters, I love it. Um, I love it as much as the first one there. Uh, it's definitely a film to rewatch. Um, you know, I, I like, I really like how they kind of went on the other side. So on the first one, you had like the main characters posse, and then you had the tech guys posse and the tech guys were kind of like the antagonists all the way through. And this one, it's kind of like you're on the flip side where main characters with the techies, tech side of things, but it doesn't really feel like, you know, you, you, especially with the introduction of the, you know, YouTuber main character when he comes in, like, it, it sort of starts off with them kind of being at odds, but then I like how they kind of meld the two, and it, it's, and uh, the sequences were really good. The story is actually decent, um, on the kind of like how the main character starts out and, and where it goes, um, so there were a lot of elements and twisters that I liked um, over the first one, but the first one is amazing still. So um, I had an awesome time that's worth owning on Blu-ray with the effects and everything. Awesome. Um, Spickle Me 4, I'm going to put in disappointing. It was between a good time and disappointing, okay? But overall disappointing because, I don't know, it didn't... It, didn't feel like the first three. It wasn't as strong. Um, the the minions were probably the best part of the whole thing. Uh, you don't see Doctor Nefario until like the very end, so I wish they would have had him and more. Um, the whole 
situation with the minions getting superpowers was really silly. Um, had humorous parts. Uh, you know, it, it just didn't feel as tight as the first three, and it wasn't as funny as the first three. I guess that's what I'm getting at. So I was going to remain there. And of course, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine blockbuster. It was hilarious. Uh, I have it tied with like the first Deadpool film as my favorite from the trilogy. Um, you know, I'd be fine if these two never throw on their costumes ever again, but like it'd be cool if they made cameos in Marvel movies going forward. But uh, it was awesome. The years in the making, I mean, decade, a decade in the making of getting these two characters together finally came too, and it was just as it should have been awesome. Uh, the The cameos were amazing. The fight, the action bits were cool. A lot of really good um, knocks, at, jokes at uh, what Marvel had become after Endgame. Um, and then a couple of uh, DCU uh, jokes thrown in there, which were <laughs> really good. Uh, worth owning a Blu-ray. And that the Deadpool trilogy is probably my favorite trilogy in all the Marvel movies that have come out. Because they all work. They're all funny. They all have their own thing. Uh, you had Cable in the second one. The first one it was an origin story. And then this third one is kind of like a mashup of all the Fox films that came before it, uh, which they actually play, play really well. They homage those films really well. In fact, if you wait till the, the credits start, they have some uh, behind the scenes of some past film, X-Men films and stuff, and that's it's really good. So it's kind of like a, a, whether you liked a majority of those X-Men Fox films or not, I mean, it's still homage to those because everybody that worked on those films worked hard to, to get, try and give, like, you know, what they gave, and uh, it's kind of like you look back on it. Uh it, it actually made me appreciate a couple of mediocre films. You know, I had my X-Men Wolverine Origins film. You know, when I originally saw it, it was disappointing, but I've grown to like it more so than not over time. And I've watched it a couple of times. Yes, they messed that Deadpool up. I get it. But I like the actor that played Sabretooth. I like Wolverine. He played a really cool uh, arc in it. And uh, the story was interesting and kind of like they, they show a little bit of like when he was younger to all the way through and how Wolverine and Sabretooth kind of had that relationship throughout their long period of time. And uh, that that in itself was it's the only movie that really they've touched on that. I mean, the, I watch like the original X-Men where they have Sabretooth in there and. Wolverine, of course, doesn't remember him, and because if you watch Origins, you'll understand why, and it does connect. But uh, the wall, the saber tooth in uh, original X Men and the two thousand movie was meh. It was brooding and all that, but like uh, I really like the actor that played uh, saber tooth in the Origins Wolverine movie more so than he's been betrayed for. But anyway. Deadpool and Wolverine, awesome. Uh, that's my tier list right there for you. Um, and all the movies there that I paid attention to. And um, there are a couple of disappointing ones for sure. But that's the way it goes, right? But overall, I am, I'm quite impressed this year where they had, especially these top two tiers, how they've had. Like, you wouldn't have seen this last year or the year before. They might have had one to three films that would have been in here and the rest all at the bottom, honestly. And uh, it's good that they're, I hope that Hollywood's pivoting away from the political garbage that doesn't need to be in every single film. And uh, even all these films on this list are not full of political agenda crap. And that's always good to see. And I hope it continues and builds and we get back to, like, summertime being, like, the big big few months where we get blockbusters like these you see here. I mean, not all of them were came out in the summer, but majority have. Uh, 
Um, so this summer has been really good. Um, so yeah, that is my tier list, everyone.